the Period Place podcast. Shark Week. <laughs> Riding the cotton pony. Yeah. I have salsa in my taco. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Rag Week. Oh. Rag Week. Oh, that's bloody hell. Bloody hell. Okay. Bloody hell, Harry. <laughs> Period Place podcast. Thanks to our mates at You by Cotex. Okay, we are back. Another week in the chair. This episode is going to be about periods Kids and, and poverty. poverty. Very close to home for you, sis. Mm-hmm. But how you been this week? Good, good week. Pumped mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Busy week. Yeah, always. <laughs> always, always, always. <laughs> Ask me how I am. <laughs> oh, um, let's see. How was your week? Um, my week was good. I actually went on a date this week. Shh. Front door. Never in my adult life have I been asked to dinner and gone on a date. <gasps> like a pr- like a proper real date, not yeah. a schmoozy into your DMs, let's Netflix and chill. That's usually my shtick. That's yeah. usually my kind of thing. But I thought, no, I'm no, no. I'm so happy for you. Tegan, sis, you got to grow up. you got to move with the times. Uh, so also, I did that. you got to find a man who's grown up. Exactly. And that's like, that was the kind of, I, I need to attract that energy, right? Mm-hmm. Like if I'm putting in this adult energy, I'm going to get myself an adult. Yeah. Um, but no, it was nice. Like I was very nervous. Like I thought I was going to uh, f- shit myself, but it's all good. Um, Did you manifest that man into your life? I don't, what? It's No, actually, I'm, I was going to say, oh, it's actually, it was my friend's brother, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Oh, okay. So now but we're no, deducing who it is. It was uh, no, it, and it was nice. And he was like, and he was older, and like it was cool. Um, but you know, then it's like the, the, going on the date's one thing, but then it's like, do I message and go, hey, came for another one? <laughs> Don't play games. Just get in there and be honest. No one yeah. has time for this. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. This if is there true. is no time to play games, it's right now. We might mm. be in lockdown next week, and you might not get to see him for three months. True. If you want to see him, message him. I should, I eh? Do it. I know I should. Open your phone now, I'll do it. Do you know what I'm realising though? At the uh, ripe wee age of 24, um, my parents got married at like 25, 26 and I'm like, <gasps> time is running out. Time is running out. Mm-hmm. Nah, not that I need, I don't need a man's. But you know what? Your eggs aren't running out because how many you got, girl? 300,000. Yeah, yeah. That's how many Why you're born with, roughly. Why don't you bring that up in your text message to him? Hey. Hey, um, I, I don't had know a great how many. Night, uh, <laughs> but we don't need to rush things because I've got 300k eggs, babe. <laughs> Maybe, roughly, <laughs> roughly. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, it's such an uh, it's such a weird experience for me. And like, as someone like I, I consider myself pretty confident. But mm-hmm. like in a space like that, where you got to be a little bit more vulnerable. Yeah, going on a date. You know what Brené says? Yeah, vulnerability. It's the key. It's the key. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, we to, for someone to be like so confident, and then me just go turn to a total shy girl. I was like, oh my god, I'm shy. But I, re- I, I but think I took his ear off the whole night. Yeah. Yeah. You can't shut me up. Was he smiling? Yeah. Well, then that's Very it. present, like looks into <gasps> your eyes, which I find quite intimidating. Wow. So yeah. he is a real confident man. Mm, nice. Yeah. Seems that way, but hey, who knows if I'll get date number two. Oh, well, <laughs> hey, we can find out next week. I might have been yep, yep, yapping too much. <laughs> Stay tuned to the Period Place podcast. We'll find out next week whether mm. Tegan... Gets a second date. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but hey, let's the talk meantime. about let's talk about this episode, episode number four, periods and poverty. Um, I am so excited to talk about this because yeah. it's not something I think growing up I really took much mind to. Like obviously you Neither see kids I. that are experiencing poverty yeah. and like people that were my age going through school, but never was, um, you know, n- never – Periods was never something I was associating with the poverty. Like, yep. okay, yeah, that kid's not got lunch today. Yep. Well, obviously, if they've not got lunch, they've not probably not got period products either. Yeah. It's a whole, like, when you break it down into that specific, it's like, oh. And I wonder how many kids at school, from your school, from my school, from every school, who don't rock up to school for a couple of days in the month, and we've never wondered why. We've never asked. Mm. That's probably why. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I think because there's so much shame around it, it was just never a conversation that we had at school either. Yeah. And I just, I do wonder, now that I'm reflecting, um, I do wonder through high school how many maybe girls that I was in class with Mm -hmm. were actually going through that. Or not just girls, just anybody, right? Like people with periods. And I think that people don't want to talk about it when they're younger, especially kids who are getting their periods, whose responsibility is for their family to buy the products. I think Mm -hmm. they're really afraid to talk about it because they don't want to bring any shame on the family. Yeah. And whether the parents have the money and they're choosing not to buy it, they're choosing to put it towards something else Mm -hmm. or whether they 
they don't have the money at all. Whatever the reason is, the children don't want to dob mm. on their parents. Mm. And so it's just it's a whole nother level of yeah. of shame wrapped up in period poverty, let alone just if it, you're an adult and it's your responsibility to Understood. try and purchase period products. Yeah. Um, so today on this episode, we have two very special guests. Sarah two mates. Mickelson, yeah. who is uh, the, also the co-founder of uh, The Period Place with Actually, you. she's the co-founder and I might be the loud one, but the original idea was hers. Oh, really? Yes, oh, oh. I'm on her gravy train. How awesome. And as well as that, we have Jacinta Gula-Sacrum, who yeah. is the founder of Dignity, another period poverty organisation. Yeah, another, and another mate. Yeah, another mate, another yeah. ally. Another ally. Um, so they're going to give us the basically the rundown on what their what the respective organisations do, I guess, yeah. and how involved much, in period poverty. Yeah, and how uh, far sort of period poverty stretches across Aotearoa, and yeah. I guess the world. I guess you could yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. And they're also going to be talking about uh, what some goals are to eliminate it, mm-hmm. how we can all work on it together, um, how we can all hold hands and sing kumbaya, dance around the maypole, mm-hmm. and you know, um, for want of a better term, get our hands bloody dirty and um, yeah. get into this and get rid of this problem for the whole country. Another couple of wahine who are ready to run it straight. Yes, run it straight. Ooh. Hey, it's Danica here. Just before we start the podcast, you by Kotex believes a period should never hold you back. Which is why, as well as keeping you covered and stress-free during your period, they're pumped to support us in smashing stigma and starting positive conversations to support people with periods. They also love the Period Place podcast and want you to know that you can catch replays along with more info on them and their products at you by Kotex, A-U-N-Z, on Facebook, Instagram or on their website. Thanks for the support, team. All right, back to the podcast. Say hello and please just introduce yourself, who you are, what you're about, where you're from and what, like, what's your mission? Like, what's your motivators? Okay, who am I? Right. <laughs> I am just into Gorsacrum. I'm 24 years old, originally from Fielding in the Manawatu, really small town, um, 15,000 <laughs> people. Our school has three farms, it's excellent. Ran away to Wellington to study a Bachelor of Commerce majoring in public policy and economics. I've always found it really interesting to look at how we can practically solve uh, social issues. I think that's what drew me into public policy. Just after I finished my undergraduate degree with my co-founder, we did a business boot camp and came up with the idea for buy one, give one period products and called that Dignity. So that was three and a half years ago now. Uh, we've got a full-time general manager, a part-time ops and marketing person, and we've given away around 30,000 boxes 35, of organic 000. initiatives. Is it 35,000? Mm-hmm. I need to check out what like. Of organic initiative pads, tampons, oil cups, and the hour period underwear to about uh, 130 schools and community groups that we support. Um, and I've been the campaign lead for Positive Periods, which was pushing to get the government to fund period products in schools, and, and that's going to be a reality from next year. Oh, that's awesome. So do okay. you want to just break down, um, just for anyone who doesn't know, how the um, the model works for Dignity, like buy one, get mm. one? Like how does that work Like in a real specific way? Totally, totally. So we get businesses to come on board with the Dignity initiative. Um, so ZD Energy's just come on board. So there's a progressive corporates that are acknowledging that periods exist and providing um, these organic pads and tampons in the bathroom freely for the employees to, to grab when they need. And then we give away the equivalent. So if the place gets 10 boxes a month, then we give away 10 boxes a month to a school or community group that we support who looks after a population that don't have access to these items. It's a bloody yeah. smart business model yeah, rather than going after the individual, going after the business because people spend more time at work than they do at home as well. And and how many times have you been caught out? Oh, running to the office like, oh. who's got a tampon? One thing that I've always, um, you have always seemed to really be pushing for what's fair, what's equitable. Um, mm. Do you remember how old you were when you recognised that things weren't fair for people with periods? Was it university? Was it before that? I'd, I'd say it was university and I think it, it comes from my dad. That he always talks to me about doing the right thing, doing the right thing by your family, by your friends, by yourself. And I think that, that's where fairness is, is a way of doing things right, I guess. And it, 
Um, I mean, at, at university, oh my gosh, the products were so expensive. You go to a chemist and a box of tampons was like $10. It was insane. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, you knew as a student that these products were unaffordable. So you think if you're living on $10 a day, you've got a household with many girls in it, like how are you going to afford these? So it was really that first news story in um, November 2016 that Kristen did on Seven Sharp. That, that had girls speaking about their lived experience and that was that was really emotional because this was young people being brave and open and saying, we don't have access to these products. For anyone who doesn't know, because obviously um, Dignity are doing some awesome stuff giving back to um, those communities that are affected most by um, period poverty. Mm-hmm. Can you break down mm-hmm. what communities here in Aotearoa are actually affected the most by period poverty? So I guess the, that news story made it you know, well, shed light on students as a group. Mm-hmm. A really, um, yeah, and, and this is also about the education that students are missing out on school. So that was, you know, very public and really easily reached as well. Yeah. So that I think not just us in the space, but other people have also, you know, know that school is so important and that, you know, the, the education system is, is there to have students, you know, be successful and this is one small thing. Uh, the other, there's a few other groups in, in terms of students that aren't at school or, or they're, they're out of the school system or, you know, so we, down in Wellington we support a group called Challenge 2000 and then they house students and try and get them back re-engaged in, in some kind of education. So there are those young people as well um, and, and definitely homeless mm-hmm. women or all those that have left really terrifying situations. Um at the refuge, we did a give to the city mission over COVID. So, any anyone that is their lives that has some element of poverty to to them, and that that access and money is is a barrier, then but everyone. Um, I actually read in an article the other day that there's around like 90,000 girls here in uh, New Zealand that are actually affected so heavily by this period inequity or period poverty. Um, what is like, is there, I know that there, there is a solution, obviously, like we, we're all going to get there, but sometimes it's a lot harder to get there. What's like the easiest solution to sort of help eliminate the po- Do you know what I mean? Like something that we could actually do so easily, yep. so quickly, rather than going through all these steps in the process, like... And, and hitting those higher levels and trying to take down the system and the patriarchy and whatever. Is yeah. there something that's just like so simple well, that I we think, can all just do? And I think there's a massive opportunity to turn one next year and having with, with this government policy, it's opt-in. Mm-hmm. So this is all schools' chances to have their boards opt-in. Yeah. That, that term one is a massive, easy option for all schools just to be like, Students see these items, we're going to opt in. Yeah. So I think that is massively important because that, that's step one. Let's get some product in there. And that's step one. Let's have some provision of product and then let's have the conversation around education as well. And then again, let's have with that education, let's talk about all the items. There's there's one thing that... Um that's become really apparent to me as I've um, learnt more over the last couple of years in this industry and that's um, when you're living in poverty and you're worried about is there enough water to bathe your kids after school today, is Mm -hmm. there food on the table, can your kids have breakfast tomorrow before they head off to school, thinking about the environmental impacts of the wrapping from the tampon you might be able to afford isn't going to be high on your list of priorities. Um, And so it's really important that we get, like Jacinta said, get products out into people's hands, get them using it, get them out of the headspace where they need to think and worry about the next period product and where it's coming from. And then as we lift them up a level, then we have we have given them the the headspace mm-hmm. to think about what are these options, what could these options be for my body, what could these options be for the environment and, and yeah. that type of thing. But unfortunately to come straight in at period underwear or menstrual cups are going to save the world, mm-hmm. it's just not practical for so many people. It's kind of like on the back burner for a lot of people, right? Yeah. And I also think I was mm-hmm. thinking about like imagine a single mum 
let's say four daughters, you know, like as she's probably going to be like, no, I'd rather my daughter have those products than me. Absolutely. And so I think this, this initiative in the schools, like just being able to opt in, all her daughters have got products now. How easy was that? And I think that's like such an amazing step for us to be able to take. Have you yeah. uh, have you had people say to you, Jacinta, we've had people up here um, say to us, what about if those kids at school who get the period products take a bunch home for their aunties and their mums and everybody else? Then so be it. <laughs> that's my response. <laughs> well, everybody obviously needs a bloody yeah. pad. Yeah. But, yeah, have you had people yeah. say to you, oh, what happens if you provide it for free? Like what, what's your response to that? Yeah, men- menstruation isn't, isn't a choice. And these are basic necessity products. You've got toilet paper, so why would you not have something for another very natural bodily function as well? I'm a bit afraid, nervous, I don't know what the right word is, Mm. Um, scared on behalf of students whose schools aren't going to opt in for them. And there are going to be some schools who don't opt in. Is there anything that we, like, what can we do to people who are listening to this if their school hasn't opted in or if they they know that their school's nervous about opting in? Like, how can we mitigate that? Mm -hmm. How can we make sure that people are opting into this? These are basic products. They should be there. If the government's providing it as an option, take it take it up and most schools have a a student that's on the board of trustees so if if you are that student on that board then then bring it up and and, and bring it up this year rather than waiting oh it's it's term one that's been four weeks bring it up now oh 100 percent. i think if you if a school's to opt in there is no negative effect on anybody if you're to opt in like this so you know whereas if you don't opt in there is there is an, a, a potential impact it's going to have on even if it's only a handful of students in a high decile school that um d- don't have access to these kind of products that, that that's who you're affecting and i feel like if there was any like principals or anybody listening like mm-hmm. please just do it yeah so there, there are people out there doing it tough and I'm, I'm an empath, so I do take on that that emotion. And so, yeah, I remember being in the Uber coming back home and I, I was upset because it was just this release of emotion that, yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful for my for my family and, and, and for my life and hopefully I'm using some of my skills to try and make the world better. Um, so, yeah, period products are just one thing. There are so many other things yeah. that, that need work and need help, but anything that we can do to make sure that students are at school and can can live their lives no matter what is in their life is really important. Just as like a bit of perspective for maybe people who haven't seen others struggling like this, there are people that are, because of their periods uh, can't even go to school, right? Oh, there was, there was one particular nurse and that was in our, our first year when we just expanded to support Auckland schools The uh, um, one of the nurses, you know, she was telling us how she had to take a girl home to shower because she had bled so much and she did not come back to school. And why, why would you? And so that, that's a whole day that this young person missed. Thank you so much, um, Jacinta, for joining us and just telling us about some issues that well, I knew nothing about really. And like not everyone has experienced um, seeing um, period poverty, period inequity on the front line like you have. And um, we just want to say we total call everything about you and um, Dignity, the organisation that you co-founded. It's, it's beautiful. It's amazing. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thanks, babe. Bye. So that was Jacinta Gulasekaram, who obviously is the founder of Dignity and what an amazing chat with her and all the amazing things she is doing. So up next, we're going to be talking to the other half of the period place. Her name is uh, Sarah Mickelson and she is kind of the total opposite to Danny, but that's why they balance each other out and doing all this amazing work at the period place. So let's get into it. Um, so when you guys decided to partner up with the period place, mm-hmm. what was the goal then? What was the goal for you guys? Because obviously I think over the years, the, the goal might have changed. Yeah. It might have got bigger or smaller or maybe more specific. But what was the goal that brought you guys together? It, it started off with like a short term. We were going to jump in there, grab a space, host an event. Um, you know, it was going to be in and out, raise some money, give it to someone else. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're like, wait, this, like, this, who's this someone is more else? than just money and who's the someone else? Mm. Yeah, um, there, there were a few people floating around in the background back then at charities and organisations that did some really cool mahi. Um, but we, we didn't land on anyone in, in particular and that, plus coupled with the fact that a corporate sponsor was 
didn't really want to know us at that time. Mm-hmm. God, that's changed now. Um, Lulz also that they're now knocking on our door. Yeah, amaze. Yeah, shit's turned around. Um, yeah, th- so that's that was pretty much it. Yeah, we, we wanted to get in get and get out, and we were like, this is a bigger problem mm-hmm. than we actually thought it was. What do we do? So we we could have just closed the door and left mentally, done something else. But. I used to describe it at the beginning as um, our idea originally was to like have this loud event, talk about period poverty, raise some money and donate the money, like yeah. you just said. Um, and I used to describe it as a really um, white guy way of looking at things. But like, white girl too. Like totally, a, yeah, back like, now, like, yeah. I'm just going to chuck some money towards it, put it on my LinkedIn profile yeah, that I raised yeah. $1,500 and yeah. I'm done. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. It's, it's a real privileged way of looking at, you know, do it on the weekend yeah. Yeah, yeah. in your own time and that's how you donate back to society. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Kieran. <laughs> you're welcome. How many comments would you like? Um, yeah, it's just did not work out that way and thank God we're still it doing it. It just got into our the, hearts yeah, somehow. Like, we're getting towards the crunchy pointy end now of, of the problem where we've got to look at it in sort of the most difficult way we've ever looked at it because everything like pulls back into the problem of people don't have enough money. People <laughs> can't live the lives that they want to live and they're held back by a whole host of stuff. And periods is just one of them. So we're, we're pushing towards that pointy end now where we're just going, what else can we do? Mm-hmm. Um, what fits in around this problem that we're not looking at yet? Yeah. Mm. Um, what am I going to say here? The When you guys, okay, so if, I, if someone was, if you were to explain um, period poverty in the simplest of form and like actually put um, the problem on paper and just write down, this is what's going on, this is how many people it's affecting, and this is what we need to do to get rid of it. Because it shouldn't exist, right? Period mm. poverty just shouldn't exist. How would you explain it to someone? It's for both of you guys. Yeah, it is the the problem of period poverty is that it's, it's a cycle of the uh, lols. Um, poverty that, <laughs> that never goes away because it affects half, if not more, of the population. If you're talking Every month. just people with periods. Month on month. Um, month on month, a day in, day out. And if you're stuck in a house, not able to go to your job, your kid because they've got their period too, aren't able to go to school. And you just, you're stuck there bleeding into your toilet if you can make it or your couch if you can't. Um, you, how are you supposed to, you know, get get on top of that, the mm. bill that you owe or pay back MSD, the, the money that you've already loaned how to, you to get your to kid's the- uniform to go to school, you know, that they've already bled through and yep. you have to buy another. Exactly. The, the cycles that exist and perpetuate poverty in itself um, exist largely around periods and the limitations people face every single bloody month. Mm. So hooking in somebody with like a, a pack of pads is going to physically allow them to get out the door if that's what they want to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah. then if they want to go to school, if they're choosing to go to work, maybe there's uh, products in their workplace that they can use once they're out of the door. Um, that gives them that little bit extra mm-hmm. motivation to get out there and um, earn money that they might need or, or want because mm-hmm. yeah, capitalist society. Um, but also like to go to school, if you can choose to have the education that you might need to to work out what you want to do for your period. If your pads aren't working for you, you want to get into a cup. You know? Or reusable underwear. or And what about if you want to play sport? Yeah, yeah. imagine all the talent lost in New Zealand sport, I mean. If we could get some like all black sponsors behind yes. very poverty, imagine we could crush the world. Yeah, I'm not a rugby person slash any sport person. Yeah, uh, but throw yeah, the ball, try what we could unlock just from people with periods. But the the simplest way to explain it is to put a person in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like everyone's got a cousin, a sister, a little brother that is um, that can encompass that persona of the person's limitations and you, you put that in your head um, and imagine them not being able to attend school and that the, the, all the other things that follow on from it. And we know that any kid that's unable to receive an ongoing education that can't get to school and participate in life and society is not going to be able to exit a poverty cycle, they are much more likely to stay trapped within being unable to find a decent job. Mm-hmm. Um one of the main predictors of 
future poverty is current poverty. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and lack of education. Um, can we talk about how period poverty isn't actually just about physically like having products? It's also about like an access to yeah. or lack of access to um, education. It could, could be that you go to the most expensive only girls school in the country and they are not giving you the appropriate education to manage your periods. Yeah. Oh, wow. Exactly. Yep. It could be, yeah, it that you don't have the... It moves away from that picture of um, the poor certain demographic mm. child um, that we've all seen on the news and, and campaigns for poverty in New Zealand um, to out to the whole story of who it's really affecting. And it affects everybody, whether you've got a period or not. If you haven't been peri- educated on period cycles, what happens to the body, what's normal, what's not, taboos start to come in, myths yeah. start to come in. Everybody fills those gaps. Mm. Like imagine if you just went to the supermarket and you just picked up a packet of tampons and threw them in the trolley like you do with toilet paper. People don't walk yeah. through the through don't the, wait for the people to pass around you in that yeah. little sort of three meter long area. That's like have you ever scary area? Have the you ever stood there at the supermarket and seen someone next to you with toilet paper in their trolley and thought, oh god, they're going to have a shit? No, <laughs> they're going to need that to wipe their bum. <laughs> True, I never thought about it like that. So for like the everyday person that's maybe not like you guys doing that real hearty groundwork, but still wants to be able to be a part of, um, you know, trying to eliminate this inequity, this poverty Mm -hmm. to do with periods, how can like the everyday person help that? Mate, jump on our website for starters, do some reading, find out about what part of the journey cycle um, resonates with you as a human being, Mm because everybody will have something different, education, uh, if they want to pay money to physically get people products now or whether they want to invest in something more long-term in the environmental uh, sort of realm of things, then, yeah, pick out something that's for you. The, mm. It's it's so massive that every little bit helps. So if people want to find us online, Sarah, where do they find us? www.theperiodplace.co.nz. Awesome. Easy. So if you want to jump online to our website and find us, awesome. But if you're out and about in one of the 10 communities where we've got our pilot trial going on with the warehouse at the moment, where you go into the store, you pick up a product, you purchase it, and then you chuck it in the bin mm-hmm. as you're heading on out, where are you going to go, Sarah? You can go up north, get in your car, have a road trip, uh, Kaikohe. You can go down to Kaitaia. You can go through Auckland all the way down Royal Oak, Lun Ave, Mount Wellington. Um, we've got Monaco and we've got Clendon. Way down far south, um, keep heading down through Cambridge, Tarapa, Hamilton and Morrinsville. Yo, Jacinda. Yo, wow. Jacinda, yeah. Okay, so you can physically go donate like that. So we can visit your website. And I think one of the um, best things you can do is just talk about it. Yeah. You know, talk about it with everybody. Make the conversation normal. Just have a corridor. Hey, um, thank you so much for coming along and sharing the corridor. It's kind of like, I feel a little bit intimidated in a room with two amazing women doing this. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Uh, you're, I'm getting there. You're, um, getting you're there. here too, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 you're a part of this. You're part, okay. of the, part of the fam. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. How cool to be speaking to two amazing wahine that are doing the groundwork when it comes to periods mm-hmm. and uh, poverty. You know, your your sis, Sarah Mickelson, my sis, my your partner in crime. My another mister. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously Jacinta as well. Thank you both to Jacinta and Sarah for joining us today. I just, I when you actually just put it on paper and actually start talking about period uh, periods and poverty, periods and inequity with it, it's... It's, I love seeing that it's not just about the products. No, it's actually it's so about the education. Mm-hmm. It's about not having the conversations. There's so much that sort of fits under this umbrella um, and there's so much we can actually do in order to, you know, kick it up the butt. Kick it up the butt. Yeah, get rid of it. Not to be confused with take it up the butt, Carl. Oh, um, shush. <laughs> so what I really, you know, I was really stoked then to have Sarah come in the studio because... You know, Sarah and I have been on this journey together for the last three years. And even though everything that we do, we work together. Sarah's been across the podcast and all this cool stuff that we've been doing. She hasn't been in here. So it was awesome to have her in here because this is the first time that I've been going out and doing something without her here. We go to meetings mm-hmm. together. You know, we take our children to, to, to meetings together and we hang out as best friends. And this mm-hmm. is, you know, one of the things that I've been doing. So to come in here and, and ha- make sure that her version and her voice and her story is shared through this podcast was really important to me because being the loud one, I tend to take over. (laughs) 
Oh, yeah, I, would, I would never know. I would never know. Exactly. So if you want to obviously um, find out more about The Period Place, you can find um, you guys on Instagram at The Period Place. At the Period Place across all the socials and all the medias. Mm-hmm. And as well as that, if you want to learn more about Dignity, Jacinta's uh, organisation that she founded, um, it is dignitynz.com. That is the website. Uh, so maybe just give a cheeky passive aggressive email to your boss. Be like, hey, we need to be a part of this. Yeah. Or maybe you're the boss and you're like, actually, this is something I need to get amongst. Yeah. If, and if you're a cafe, if you're a restaurant, Restaurant, if you're, uh, you know, an office in the city, if you're McDonald's, if you're whatever it is, like, mm-hmm. let's get tampons handed out with those fries at the yeah. window. Exactly, everywhere. It should be everywhere. Let's, uh, let's take over. Let's kick it up the butt. Let's kick it up the butt. Kick it up the butt. Let's make periods normal again. So normal. And um, next week, we have a very exciting episode. It is episode five: periods in Tiao Māori. Speaking uh, of making periods normal again, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's through the Tiao Māori lens. Yes. So periods in Tiao Māori. Uh, we are talking with Tarina uh, Tripanel. She's from Māori TV, and um, I think we're, this is going to be a really interesting chat. Being uh, myself a Māori woman, mm-hmm. um, and learning, reconnecting with my fucker papa, and learning more and more about my culture, and becoming more proud of it. It's really um, cool to find out that there's so there's so many special things about the way um, Māori view life. It's so spiritual and we actually viewed periods as a very sacred and yeah. special thing. Before colonisation. Before colonisation. That's yeah. when we just started getting a bit whakamā, a bit shy about it and yep. embarrassed and, um, and, and the it was, there was a different narrative. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're going to strip it down. We're going to talk about uh, what it means to look at a period through the Te Ao Māori lens mm-hmm. and we're going to learn all about that next week. So ka kite. The Period Place Podcast. Thanks to our mates at Ubicotex. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok at The Period Place. Hosted by Danica Revel and Tegan Yawur. Special aroha to Sarah Mickelson. Produced by Carl Thompson and project managed by Heidi Thompson. Both from Blue and Ginge Creative.